Here's your chance to check out My Disney Brain and stay in touch and in tune with all things Disney and Walt Disney World. My Disney Brain, we take a brown eye perspective on all things Disney, park updates, news, movies, and more. Sign up today. Stay in touch, stay in tune with Walt Disney World and all things Disney. A heart's desire. It calls to us. And when we're brave enough to listen and bold enough to Hello listen, and welcome to My Disney Brain. Today is August the 25th. And my name is Kelly. It's my pleasure to welcome you in today. Thanks for hanging out with me. As you can see, I'm in the, well, for those of you who are looking on YouTube, uh, you can see I'm in a studio by myself today. And we're going to do our second installment of our History Of. And as you will recall, our first installment, uh, we talked about the history of the Polynesian, which was very interesting to me because Polynesian is one of my favorite resorts. Learned a lot, a lot of stuff I did know, but a lot of stuff I didn't know. And October 1, 1971, there was a second resort that was part of opening day, and that was the Contemporary, which is what we're going to talk about today. So hang around for that. Before we get going, I always like to thank those of you who are supporting the podcast. Our first time viewers, of course, welcome aboard. And our first time listeners, welcome aboard. Please go ahead and either subscribe to our YouTube channel, wherever you're listening to this, be it on the podcast or YouTube, go ahead and uh, subscribe, turn on the bell, whatever is there that you need to do to alert yourself that the next time uh, my Disney brain has new content out, you will be alerted. And those of you who have been coming back week after week, month after month, you know what to do. And thank you for being here also. I am really excited about uh, these uh, shorter podcasts and the the history of because I'm learning uh, so much. And we're able to put out a little bit more content by doing it this way. So I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. And we're just going to kind of jump into it today. I only have one Thing that I like to do uh, before I get started, and that is a cross promotion. You remember a few podcasts ago, I told you that we were entering into some podcast cross promotions with some other Disney podcasters. And I hope that you are going to check these guys out because they're doing some great work and it's pretty diverse content. Uh, I'm not a competitive guy like that. I think it's room enough for everybody to succeed. There's enough listeners. There's enough subscribers. There's enough everything. There's a, we live in an abundant universe. So I'm not someone that's going to not help somebody else while I'm also trying to grow my thing. So these guys have some pretty diverse content. And I think in addition to, listen to, in addition to listening to us, you as a Disney um, person, a Disney nerd, a Disney fanatic, whatever you label yourself as, you may enjoy some of this content as well. That's why I'm bringing it to your attention. Otherwise, we would be into our podcast already. So this is a new one, and it's called All Things Disney. All Things Disney. And the podcast All Things Disney is an amazing one. It's an away, amazing way to learn and stay informed with anything dealing with Disney. From the parks to the Disney news to movie, food reviews, they have it all. You can join them each week for a new and exciting show. The podcast can be found on all major podcasting platforms. So it's easy for you to find, such as Apple Podcasts and, of course, Spotify. You can also find them on Instagram, and their Instagram handle is at all things Disney podcast. Again, that's at all things Disney podcast. Now, you should be able to go there and follow them. So please do that. Uh, Go check out All Things Disney Podcast. Help them out by subscribing. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, give them a five-star rating and a nice short review. So, again, the name of the podcast is All Things Disney. And, of course, we would like to encourage you to do the same thing for My Disney Brain. Uh, We always encourage our listeners each week to please share our links, share our contacts with your family, with your coworkers, with your associates, uh, I hope you don't have any enemies, but if you do share it with them, uh, you know, because, you know, you know, people that like Disney. And right now, all of us or the most of us are away from the parks and we're missing it. And content like this can really kind of help, you know, get us through until we can go to the parks again. Now, also would like for you to please go and give us 
some reviews. Uh, we've got a few reviews on the channel, but you know, uh, one of the ways podcasts are found is uh, the reviews. I think the algorithm picks up the number of reviews they have, positive reviews. So if you could go in and give us uh, some five star reviews, we would certainly appreciate it. All right. So again, all things Disney. So we're going to jump right into our uh, content for today. And like I said, what we're talking about today is the contemporary, the contemporary resort. So what we learned uh, when we talked about the Polynesian was that there were three components of opening day, October 1, 1971, for the Walt Disney World. And at that time, there was one theme park. It was the Magic Kingdom. There were two resorts. They were the Polynesian Village Resort and the Contemporary Resort. We've already talked about the Polynesian. Today, we're going to talk about the Contemporary. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, the Contemporary, Disney's Contemporary Resort, it was originally to be named Tempo Bay Hotel. And it was previously called the Contemporary Resort Hotel. Now, of course, it's located Walt Disney World at Bay Lake, Florida. It opened, like I said, in 1971, October 1, when Magic Kingdom and Polynesian opened. And the hotel is one of two of the original properties, of course, and the other being the Disney's uh, Polynesian Village Resort. The Contemporary is located also on the monorail, and it is a few stops, two stops away from Magic Kingdom. The Contemporary Tower is the most prominent of the resort's of the four-star standalone buildings. It was built on what's called an A-frame with outer walls with slope inwards around an inner atrium. This design was a collaboration by Disney, United Steel uh, Corporation, uh, and the Los Angeles architect firm of Welton and Beckett. To construct the building, the steel frames were erected on-site in modular pre-constructed rooms designed by California architect Donald Wexler, they were lifted into place by a crane. And we talked about this a little bit in the Polynesian piece where we were talking about, you know, how construction was being done on site and construction was being done off site to kind of speed up the process. Most of Disney's Polynesian Resort and the Contemporary Resort were built the same way, except the rooms were stacked instead of slid in. So you can imagine when the rooms got there, they just kind of did like a puzzle piece where the rooms just kind of fit and they just kind of slid into place. And it kept them from having to, you know, build and beautify those rooms on location. So they were done off, off, off site. Now, let's see. Uh, November 17, 1973, the Contemporary was the site of what would become one of the most infamous or famous press conferences statements in modern American politics history. I didn't know this. I didn't realize this. Uh, obviously, we know about the speech from President Nixon where he declared he wasn't a crook, but I didn't realize it was done at the Contemporary. So I don't know if you knew that or not, but it would, took place in the Contemporary Atrium. Um, Nixon's whose job approval rating had been declining steadily for over a year due to the ongoing Watergate scandal, made the statement during an appearance at the Associated Press Managing Editors Association annual convention at which time he held a live addressed uh, a live one hour televised press conference following an earlier question on Nixon's taxes Nixon addressed the claims that he prohibited from his public service stating i have earned every cent and in all of my years of public life i have never obstructed just obstructed justice people have got to know whether or not their president is a crook well i'm not a crook i've earned everything i've got Less than one year later, facing almost certain impeachment removal from office, Nixon announced that his resignation, August 8, 1974, became effective the following day. So that took place at the Contemporary. So there's a little something maybe you didn't know. So let's see. In 2005, Disney began an extensive renovation of the Contemporary Resort. It was completed in 2009. As part of the construction, the north wing of the hotel was demolished to make way for a separate DVC or Disney Vacation Club resort that opened in 2009. At the same time, the Bay Lake Tower began construction. Disney's Racket Club was demolished by January 30, 2007, while the north wing itself was demolished between January 31 and April 6, also 2007. Construction on the new building continued through 2007 without Disney announcing what actually was being built. 
The Bay Lake Tower then opened in 2009. So let's see the main building. One, I, I remember when I first went to Walt Disney World as a kid. Before you even get into the park, the monorail was this fascination of like, because there was not a, another monorail anywhere. And really for kids that are coming from less populated cities, suburbs, and even the country, you didn't really see like subways. So if you lived in New York or if you lived in L.A. or somewhere in Chicago where there were subways, then you were familiar with that. But outside of that, there was nothing like a monorail that existed anywhere. And then for it to be running through a building, this was something we had to see. So I remember when we first got to the parks that above everything, I was excited to ride this monorail and to do it while it was going through the building. That's the reason why I'm so familiar with the contemporary, because I knew that was the building. That was the hotel that the monorail actually rode through. And I can still remember the first time we rode through. I mean, it was just fascinating. We didn't get off it. We were not staying there. It was just, you know, on our way to the park. But it was really fascinating, and it was it was one of those things that I'll never forget. And even today, when you ride in the monorail, you go through the contemporary. It's just one of those design features that always put Walt and the Imagineers ahead of the times. Um, so anyway, let's 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 keep going. So Bay Lake Tower is separate from the contemporary. It is uh, connected uh, in this way. It is the Disney Disney Vacation Club uh, component to the to the contemporary. So Bay Lake Tower at Disney's Contemporary Resort is part of the DVC. You'll hear many, many people say the DVC is Disney's Vacation Club. It is a 15-story addition that officially opened on August the 4th, 2009. I don't know this for sure, but this has got to be the largest DVC addition because it's like a whole nother uh, hotel resort. We'll, 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 we'll suss that out, too. It's located on the former location of the demolished North Garden Wings Room. The tower shares design features with the original resort. It does look like the contemporary, shaped differently, of course. It's not an A-frame, but the texture of the building and the color, all of that is consistent. The front desk, the concierge, the valet, the bell services and transportation, all shared services provided through the main resort. Uh, Bay Lake Tower has a concierge desk and an online check-in desk of their own for guests who wish to check in in Bay Lake and not at the contemporary. Uh, its fifth floor is connected by a skyway from the uh, main tower's uh, run, you know, the, 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 uh, that connects the contemporary over to, to Bay Lake. And it provides an awesome view over into the parks. Uh, you can see uh, Cinderella's Castle. You can pretty much see everything, uh, Space Mountain, uh, the railroad. You can see it all. Now, the units were among the most expensive offered by Disney's Vacation Club at its initial offering presumably because of their proximity to Magic Kingdom. Some of the resort's features include full-length windows with views into Magic Kingdom or onto Bay Lake. Some bathrooms on Magic Kingdom side include movable partitions to permit watching the park's fireworks displays from the bathtub. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I had no idea. Uh, in terms of dining, there are several restaurants in the Contemporary Resort. We're going to go over them in more detail in a few minutes, but one of the ones that you probably have heard of that more than likely has the best view of Magic Kingdom fireworks is the California Grill. Uh, the California Grill is a full-service dining restaurant and is located on the 15th floor, which is the top of the Contemporary Resort Tower. It's formerly the top of the World Restaurant, so it's now the California Grill. Uh, so let's see. So in 1971, what was uh, what was intended with the contemporary? And before I kind of get into this, I didn't do this last time and I, I felt like I really needed to do this. I like to credit where we're getting this information from so that the um, original articles and the information that we scour through the Internet, that these folks are getting credit. And so a lot of the information comes from Disney's Wikipedia pages, and then we kind of suss out and break out and link out from there. But there are two particular sites that have gone to great lengths and, and research a lot of this information. And one is called allears.net. 
and the other is called wdwmagic.com. These threads are very, I mean, they've got a lot of information. So I want to credit these guys and also tell you to go check them out. If you're looking for historic information on Disney or just a good uh, way to keep up with the parts, both of these websites are very good. WDWmagic.com and allears.net. Okay. All right. So uh, at the beginning, 1971, the contemporary, when it opened, it was incomplete as most things were when Disney World opened. I don't think the parts were complete. Polynesian wasn't complete. Contemporary wasn't complete. When Disneyland opened, it wasn't complete. Everything was sort of a work in progress. Uh, On October 1, 1971, cranes hung over it like vultures. Disney had been so concerned about competition of hotels uh, in time for the 1971 holiday that they had bought out U.S. Steel's contract in early 1971 and taken over the installation of the hotel rooms and operation of the U.S. Steel plant themselves. So I guess they were kind of freaking out that this is not going to get done. You guys are not moving fast enough. So they bought them out and started doing it themselves. So this was around the same time that Disney fired nearly all of their construction contractors and hired back the entire construction crew under their new company. This says a lot about Roy and the way he ran uh, Disney, uh, just to kind of take all of this in, in your hands because you feel like you can you can provide it. And uh, the folks that you contracted maybe didn't have the same sense of urgency uh, that you had because their name's not on it and yours is. Uh, Buena Vista Construction uh, was the company that they uh, uh, bought all those construction workers back from. Uh, this happened after Dick Nunes found one too many crews not doing the job fast enough to get the park open. We're going to have to do some research on this guy, Dick Nunes, because uh, even during our study of the Polynesian, his name came up several times in terms of championing uh, several major uh, either attractions or certain aspects of the construction and the opening. So I'd just like to kind of do some research on him. I'm just going to make a mental note that we're going to uh, do some research on him at some point. Some highlights of the Contemporary Resort. One is located a short walk from Magic Kingdom. I think probably the shortest walk from the Magic Kingdom. It's home of California Grill. We already talked about that piece of it. Um, And then the monorail drives straight through it. There's no other Disney resort or any resort for that matter that has that to boast about. Okay, so what is the Contemporary Resort like? The Contemporary Resort is one of the two original Walt Disney World Hotels. We already talked about that. It's located between Bay Lake and Seven Seas Lagoon. It's on a monorail loop and it's close to Magic Kingdom. It consists of a large A-frame section. This is unlike any other hotel that I've seen or that certainly that's on property. The fourth floor of the tower is known as the Grand Canyon Concourse, where you will find a variety of shops, restaurants, as well as the monorail station. So when you go, technically you're on the fourth floor. It's a little hard to understand if you've not been to the contemporary. Because I remember the first time I got off, I thought, okay, we got off. We went downstairs to Shelf Mickey's. I thought that was maybe the first or second floor. No, there you can go further and further down. So you're technically on the fourth floor when you get off on the monorail. Um, There's also a walkway to Bay Lake. Talked about that already. A Disney Vacation Club Resort. The contemporary offers many recreational options. And it also houses large convention facilities. This was one of the things I was really surprised to know that uh, there was on the bottom floor, the first floor. There are these is a huge air areas there for uh, gatherings and for conventions and things like that. I, I, I didn't know because it's not visible unless you're standing at contemporary. I don't guess there's any way for you to know. Uh, But when you go down to the first floor, when you're checking in and you come in on the first floor, you'll see there's a very large space. Uh, spaces, I should say, down there, and there they host conventions. Now, what are the advantages of staying at the resort? The first thing I can tell you without even going through my notes here is that you're on the monorail. You're on the monorail and you're walking distance to Magic Kingdom. That's why it's priced the way it's priced, because you're so close to the uh, most popular park in all of Walt Disney World. So again, location, location, location. As one of the monorail hotels, the Contemporary Resort is very well located. The Magic Kingdom is only a short walk away, and getting to Epcot simply requires transferring from one one monorail uh, to another. In addition, the Polynesian and the Grand Floridian are easily accessible from the Contemporary Resort. 
the rooms at the Contemporary Resort are among the largest in Walt Disney World also. There are several dining options within the resort. Um, there's Chef Mickey's and the California Grill. And again, we're going to go through all of the dining options in just a minute. It also has one of the largest selection of recreational activities. I did notice when I did a tour one of the times I visited that uh, there were tennis courts, swimming pool. There's um, all sorts of things that you can do uh, from the Contemporary. What are the room options at the Contemporary? The Contemporary has standard rooms and suites. Standard rooms have two queen beds, a day bed or a king size bed and a day bed. They can accommodate up to five people plus a child under three. Suites in various configurations and price ranges are also available. What are the, where are the rooms located? Well, the Contemporary Resort has two sections. The tower, uh, which is 14 stories tall and has approximately 500 guest rooms. It's the main building that we're all used to seeing, the A-frame. The tower rooms have two views, either Bay Lake or, uh, or Magic Kingdom parking lot. The uh, South Garden Wing is located to the south of the tower. It has approximately 250 rooms. The garden rooms have either a water, garden, or parking lot view. Now, of course, if you're in the tower, I just want to make sure you understand this. If you're in the tower and you have a parking lot view, that literally means you have the Magic Kingdom view because the parking lot is right in front of the building, the contemporary, but right over that is the Magic Kingdom. So the monorail goes through the contemporary, out, over, and the next stop is in the Magic Kingdom. And you can see, basically, you can see almost Main Street. I mean, you can see the check-in area. You can see Space Mountain, Cinderella Castle. You have, a, you have probably the best view, uh, period. The only way your view can get better is if your room goes higher. So what are the room prices like? So this is where... I'm just I'm going to kind of give you a summary here, but obviously with uh, things being the way that they are, uh, you're going to have to kind of when you get ready to book, I'll just suggest you go. I'm going to give you these ranges, but don't hold me to any of this because it's going to be different when you go on the site. It's going to be different for a number of reasons. Number one, uh, we're coming out of COVID. Number two, uh, we're getting close to the holidays. Uh, number three, I don't know how the park you know, parts being closed have impacted their pricing. And so the pricing could, could fluctuate based on all of those factors. But I'll give you a sense uh, here as we kind of go through this. Now, first things first, it's considered a deluxe resort. So it's going to be the most expensive of all the resorts outside of a, like a DVC. Um, their regular rate prices do not include the Florida state taxes nor the county resort tax. Standard rooms have a minimum four-person occupancy per, per room. There's no charge for children under 17 years uh, when in the same room as the adults. If you have more than two adults in a room, there will be a $25 per night charge for each extra adult. The maximum number of people each room, again, is five. Six per suite plus a child under three in a crib. Walt Disney World rooms rates vary by season and all the other components I just told you about. But let's kind of run through them and see, you know, if I can give you a, a, a range. So uh, Garden Wing standard view room from 450 to about 750. Garden Wing, Garden Wing, Garden View room about 460 to 800, 819 rather. Garden Wing King Room Range, 540 to 825. Garden Wing Deluxe Room, about 550 to 850. Uh, the Tower Bay Lake uh, Room Range is from 630 to about 930. So I know that's a big, that's a big gap. Uh, the Tower, the Magic Kingdom View Rooms are about 700 to a little over 1,000. Obviously, those are going to be expensive. The atrium club level, about 800 to 1,200. Atrium club level Magic Kingdom view, most expensive, is about 875 a night to about 1375 a night. And then lastly, uh, deluxe rooms and suites range from about $1,300 to you can pay over 4000 um, I would suggest what you do is when you get ready to book and contemporary is the place that you want to stay is that you obviously plug in your dates and see what see what's available. Uh, what 
What's in the room? What are the amenities? Well, there's a small in-room refrigerator, a small safe, coffee maker, ironing board, TV, flat screen TV. Um, there's Wi-Fi uh, within the hotel, of course. Uh, the Contemporary Resort offers three full-service restaurants. So here we go. We talked about the California Grill already, so let's start with there. I'll start right there. This is the premier restaurant of the Contemporary. It's located on the 15th floor of the Tower Building, offers California-style cuisine and sushi. The views of the Magic Kingdom and surrounding areas are breathtaking, and the lounge or the outer balcony are perfect spots for one to watch the Magic Kingdom fireworks. Now, that's a very popular thing to do. So if you decide that's something you want to do, I would, I would suggest when you are making your booking uh, to go ahead and reserve your dining and be specific where you want to sit. Now, I do, I've do. i not done this, but I believe from the pictures I've seen that you can see the fireworks from multiple places within inside the restaurant and, of course, on the balcony. But the best place to see it is on the balcony. So if you want the balcony, I think you can reserve it. You just have to be specific and do it when you make your booking. Check in for the California Grills located on the second floor next to the escalators. And, of course, reservations are a must. On the bottom level, there's a restaurant called The Wave on the first floor. I was very surprised to see this, of course. The restaurant's located on the first floor, just past the check-in desk as you enter, and it offers a variety of upscale dishes like braised lamb shank, grilled pork tenderloin, and seasonal vegetable stew. The Wave also offers full-service breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The Wave Lounge. It's a lounge connected to the Wave, featuring cocktails, wine, and small plates. You can order um, from the Wave menu as well in the Wave Lounge. Now, Chef Mickey's, which I have been to, is on the second floor, I think. Second, third floor. It's on the third floor. Uh, this is uh, normally where you'll see a lot of vloggers and people doing breakfast, but uh, this is located in the contemporary, of course, a buffet breakfast with Mickey. This is a character type dining situation where characters can come out and, you know, see families and kids. That's offered every morning. In the evening, it's a buffet featuring prime rib, seafood, and a variety of other dishes. Um, also, Mickey and company come out in the evening. So you have character breakfasts in the morning, character dinners in the evening. There are two counter services. One is Contempo Cafe. It's located on the fourth floor. It serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner, along with assortment of snacks and drinks. Uh, across from the Contempo Cafe is the Outer Rim. It's a cocktail lounge. It serves wine, beer, and cocktails, of course. There isn't any food on the menu, but you're welcome to bring over food from Contempo Cafe. The Sandbar. The Sandbar is located by the pool, and it's open seasonal hours. It serves mainly burgers, deli sandwiches, and things like that, ice cream. The bar also serves beer, wine, and cocktails. And then lastly, the Rapid Field uh, Beverage Program allows Disney Resort guests to buy uh, a resort mug that can be refilled for a certain period of time as designated uh, at time of purchase. These mugs are uh, enhanced by an RFID barcode that enables the mug to be deactivated when the designated time is complete. That's pretty snazzy, so you can't get refills when you're not supposed to. All right, so some of the amenities. Uh, the pool. Um, there are actually two pools at the Contemporary. The larger pool is a freeform pool, and it's complete with a 17-foot-high curving slide. There's also a round, quiet pool, which is shallow, it's around the edges and deeper in the center. Cabanas are available nearby for daily or hourly rental. They include a flat screen TV, docking stations for your smart devices, resort phone, and a mini fridge. Two whirlpools have also been added, one of which is located on the peninsula, with, um, which jets out the freeform pool area. Now, in 2009, a brand new children's water play area opened. Futuristic is designed, futuristic in its design, kids can run and play through the fountains and the water spouts. Now, if you want to shop, you can do that also at the Contemporary. There's a place called Bayview Gifts. The front section just off the escalator offers refrigerated chocolates, fudge, homewares, and photo collectibles. 
The middle section offers ladies casual fashions, watches, jewelry, and framed art collectibles. The end section offers men fashions. fashions. Fantasia Gifts. This is the place where most of us are familiar with. It offers Disney care to merchandise and clothing. It's a wide selection of pins also located in the center of this shop. Fantasia Market. It offers a variety of reading materials, newspapers, magazines, etc. Also has liquor and refrigerated items. This shop, this shop also stocks health and beauty items guests may need as well. So if you forgot something, you can probably pick it up there. Now, one of the things that people love to do is watch Disney fireworks. And I think the contemporary, based on its location and the, the uh, size of the resort in terms of the you know 14 uh, stories high and plus Bay Lake with this 17 stories, I think it's probably the preferred place, if you're not in the park, of course, to watch the resort, uh, I'm sorry, Magic Kingdom fireworks. They can be easily viewed from the resort. One of the best spots for this is the 15th floor California Grill, which we already talked about. The music, which accompanies the fireworks, is piped into the lounge so guests don't miss a thing. Guests with uh, tower rooms facing the Magic Kingdom can also view the show from their terraces, which is great. If you're a guest on the 14th floor concierge, you can watch the fireworks from the balcony off the lounge. Well, that's the contemporary, and um, I've I've never stayed at the contemporary. I'll be very honest with you. I um, I don't know if I just am so enchanted by the Polynesian that I've just kind of never really entertained staying at the contemporary. But uh, it's not really been like a must do for me. But I think just out of curiosity, particularly with some of the rooms that we've described here today, I'm going to look a little bit more in detail to it. I've always been fascinated, like I said, since I was a kid to be able to go through it on the monorail. Uh, But I haven't been really tempted to stay there. But after this, I think I'll I think I'll look into it again. But this is it, guys. This is the review of the historical uh, overview of the Contemporary Resort. Again, it was there day one, October 1, 1971. It was one of two original resorts, and it is still around today. And it's very, very popular. Of course, it would be as close as it is to the Magic Kingdom. I hope you've enjoyed this. We're going to come back each week with a, a different history of or some deep dive into something. Uh, be it a resort, be it an attraction, or just history on walk and the parks. And this can add to our knowledge base, our interest level, and our enjoyment, overall enjoyment of the parks. Because maybe you learned something here today you didn't know, and the next time you go to the contemporary, it'll be something that you can uh, use as a conversation piece, or maybe ask, or go and investigate on your own. Thanks, guys, for joining me here at My Disney Brain. It is always my pleasure to have you here with us. Uh, We do hope that you subscribed. If not, please go ahead and do that and continue to follow us on social media where we've got new information coming out on a daily basis. uh, Please go ahead and share our links with your family, friends, co-workers, associates, etc. We would certainly appreciate it. And for those of you who are kind, kind enough to give us uh, a five star review, I've got to think of something to share with you guys. Give me a few days and I will and I'll post it out. But if you don't mind, please give us a review. It really helps us. It helps the podcast. It helps us get noticed. And don't forget to check out our friends at All Things Disney. Okay. Leave us a comment in the comment section if you have any questions or on our Facebook page and I'll make sure I get to it. Thank you so much. Have a magical day.